This episode is sponsored by Wacom. Wacom.com. Number nine. 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 <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. This is the number one podcast in Rogers Park, and I'm so excited to have this awesome artist on my podcast. Um, I've been friends with him online for a few years, haven't never met in person yet, but we'll do that one of these days. Um, huge fan of his work. You know, he does all right. He, like, he does pretty good with the pictures. I'm sure he does pretty good with the ladies as well. Um, and uh, I also have this awesome book. He, he has this really awesome book that he, that he has his pictures in, his artworks, his drawings, his paintings, and it's really, really awesome. It's a good book. We'll probably talk about that a little bit. Um, anyways, this guy is amazing, and uh, can't wait to hear what he's got to say. Uh, he's got an awesome hat on and a really cool beard, so it's gonna you can tell this is going to be a good one. So, all right, all the way down from uh, Houston, Texas, where I'm sure it's really nice and beautiful and hot outside. Please welcome Mr. Jota Lil. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you for such a wonderful <laughs> introduction. <laughs> number nine. <laughs> number, number eight. Number eight. Yeah, I don't know why I did that, but yeah. um, anyway. Um, <laughs> It's awesome to, to be able to talk to you, man. Me like too, the, too, man. Me too. A lot of respect and appreciation. Oh, same here, man. Yeah, you're uh, – um, I'm, I'm just like – one thing that I really love, like just right off the bat about what you do is that you're, you're still doing it all traditionally, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. You know, because – I mean, I, that's what I prefer to do, and I do it as much as I can on my own, but it's not easy when, yeah. you know um, – I mean, you you got the, you got what you got the cool thing of like you're doing paintings for galleries and that sort of a thing, which is awesome. Um, and I just had Roberto Prada on last week, and and what blows my mind is he's he works in oils for illustration and deadlines, and it's crazy to me, you know. Um, so I I I I'm keep that for digital <laughs> because the deadlines are too crazy. But um, I just love that you're full on traditional, and it's it's so cool too how much you share. Um, like your videos on Instagram and everything, because um, I'm sure a lot of people, I mean, I don't know 100%, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would just see your work and go, oh, those are just some digital paintings, you know? But no, you can see you sitting there painting them and everything. It's just awesome, man. Yeah, that, that was uh, one of the, the, the first compliment I had. Like, okay, yeah, it's not digital. Right? Mm -hmm. I can take that. I can take that. But yeah, I understand. I, I know we had this conversation before, and I know how they like headline that deadlines work they're crazy like you have to get this thing done for yesterday and yeah. it's really really hard to do especially with oil and yeah. i followed roberto para for a long time too and i always was a fan of his artwork too and yeah. uh, amazing unbelievable i keep doing that for magazines and for publishing so, yeah. so it's different I, you know i can take a a month a week weeks to, to finish something and but when you have to get it done for Tomorrow morning, yeah. Starting right now, it's uh. Yeah, and there's a certain amount of um, freedom artistically that I think you automatically lose. Yeah. Because you you know like for example right now um, I'm super stoked about it, but at the same time it's kind of a stressful job. But I'm doing three paintings for Mad Magazine uh, for the issue ten, and. They are three different posters, and each one of it's like spoofs, and each one of them has like several, like five or six people in them. Um, and you know, you don't, they don't, you don't have as much time as you would want to try to develop the characters and make them as good as you want. And then the weird thing is, they're having me like pull back on my exaggeration, like it's Mad Magazine. Yeah. Wow. And they're like, oh, that's too much exaggeration. I'm like, I. I was I was I was thinking already that I wasn't really exaggerating that much, but now it's like almost portraits and ugh, you know, that's not what I wanted to do. But um, but yeah, you have to kind of sometimes sacrifice that. But that's what's cool. That's what I love about um, seeing what you're doing with your work is you you you're very um, uh, you're, you're pushing that the creative um, 
yeah, part of your brain a lot. You're like really pushing the shapes and form quite a bit, and um, it's really cool to see where you go with it. Thank you, man. And, 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 and again, I know, especially if you are work, working for clients, that you have to kind of you know, try to enjoy and try to do you mm -hmm. to you know, please them. And, that, and that's really hard, especially if we see the deadline. Yeah. And if you're just doing you, you just like, get crazy and try to go farther. Maybe you will you know, fail, <laughs> but it's, it's your stuff, you know? Yeah. That's, uh, that's a good thing to have. And, yeah. And, oh, yeah. for sure. How... Um, I'm curious, like, um, how long, like, did you, I mean, how long ago did you start getting into caricature um, and painting like this? Oh, man. I, I was um, thinking about that the other day, talking with a, with a colleague. And, uh, I mean, I've been, I've been in love with caricature since the beginning. I remember um, I was pushed to go to an art class because I always hate classes of anything <laughs> in our class yeah. and they were you know doing the the same thing you know making you paint uh empty bottles of uh, fake uh, fruits and stuff and i always have this idea i want to do portraits i want to do faces i was always fascinated and i talk about four five six years old and i want to do faces and um and i think i was really annoying and uh the the, the art teacher just throw me a, a book with, I don't know if they were scientists or um, uh, writers, but they were doing in, in ink, mm. and they were caricatures. And I was, wow, what is this? So he asked me to, you copy those. And I, that was, you know, that changed my world, like, yeah. forever. I want to do this. I, I couldn't understand how these things were, was working. Mm -hmm. And I went, <laughs> you know, to, uh, I was seeing these uh, uh, caricatures in, in, in newspapers, and because you knew the, the politician and, and you see how these people make these, you know, changes, you can still see the, 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 the person. So I was always fascinated. Yeah. By that. And since then, I was always trying. Of course, you being a kid for you was easier. OK, I'm doing caricature because you're not good enough to make a real face or real portray. No, you yeah. just caricature. If the eyes don't go the same way, I just see caricature. So that was yeah. my idea of kind of, you know. Man. I think that's so weird when people say that because I've heard that before too. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> no, it's actually way more complicated. It's like way, way more complicated. That, that was to say when I was a kid, I was just playing that card, but they understood. Okay, this is harder to have people think it. Is. Yeah. So, and then and they were they were, they I, I get to the point because I, as everyone, we grow up watching cartoons, and I remember watching the Flintstone. And I didn't make the, 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 the connection until I see, for example, Tony Kurt, Curtis and the Flintstones, you know, all these special guests, they were really uh, people. And I say, OK, this is a real person. So, OK, they can yeah. do this world. So that was OK. This is a caricature, you know, like that blew my mind. And I, OK, I, I need to do that. I need to do that. So since the beginning, since I was a kid, I was always fascinated about that. And I didn't, never wanted to do portray. I'm doing portraying right now for uh, uh, foundation, but that's other thing that I do. But it's really hard, and I, I can I, I can imagine for you too. Like uh, when you're doing caricatures, well, maybe you're not your your kid, but I feel like I'm, you know, with uh, Hancock's, like uh, because my mind and my hand oh yeah yeah are in places, and you have to get stuck in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you mean when you're doing like realistic portraits, it's like yeah. yeah. No, I know exactly what you mean. It's it's you have to like think completely differently because it's like it's it's basically just measuring, you know, and you have to be faithful yeah. to how, you know, the relationship between the features. And um, but there there's there's been times before where like even my pulp cover I did for Time magazine, um, that's slightly that, caricatured. There's that and congrats for the Mad Magazine. Those are oh, themes of every artist. Oh, no, that was I'm still kind of in shock about that one. Um, but yeah, but even in that, like, I, you know, the, it's supposed to be a realistic, you know, image of the Pope, but like, it wasn't until like, man, maybe a year or so after I did it, I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, I kind of slightly did a caricature a little bit. Like I, I didn't re I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, with, but, with slight yeah. those things, but without even noticing. Yeah. Just slight, like. It's it's hard, you know, and and there's been times before where I've, I'm supposed to be doing a realistic portrait, and my wife will look at it and she'll go, "Oh, I think you made the mouth a little too big." And I'm like, "Really? 
looks great to me. And then he looking like, oh, I did. <laughs> yeah. He has a big mouth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have those too. I have those. And I, <laughs> I have an expert that she wasn't even an artist. And she made a comment on, 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 on paintings. And I was thinking, what would you know? What would you know? Like, uh, and I said, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. I mean, so into the, the, the painting and, you know, you know how that things work. Like, uh, they, we don't see until the next day. We yeah. don't see until, like, oh. Yeah, it's funny. My my wife's actually she is an artist. She's mostly like into like oil painting and stuff, but she'll she'll come in. It's it's really annoying. Like, uh, I mean, she means well, but there's there's I was doing these oil paintings for a client recently, and uh, you know, and I'm working on it. I'm the one working on it. You know, I know what I'm gonna do. I know what I haven't done yet. And she'll come in and she'll be like, mm, I don't think that's quite dark enough in that one spot or something. I'm like, I didn't ask you to, to like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but then I'll look at it later and I'm like, yeah, she was right. But still, it's like, let me work, you know? <laughs> no, I would get that. This is so <laughs> Yeah, I know. That, it drives me nuts. Um, like, it, it's just funny. My uh, my dad used to do that when I was a kid because he's an artist. But I'd be drawing something and he'd be like, oh, let me show you. You know, and he'd like start kind of redrawing it. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> that's my drawing. <laughs> um yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. So you've been you basically started doing it when you were a kid, and yeah. uh, isn't it? So that's that's what happened with me as well. Um, I just I I've told people this before, but I thought I invented caricature, um, I because I I didn't I didn't really recognize it or see it as anything. I just started drawing my friends this way, yeah. and um, and I just got obsessed with it. And once 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 my mind, and I'm sure you can relate to this, once my mind kind of switched into that mode you can't turn it off like you go onto a city bus or anywhere and you're just like you just you know and i find when you see a bunch of people together you you start seeing them in, even more exaggerated because you're bouncing their relate their faces off other people's faces all of a sudden this person looks like a little box and this person you know but it doesn't turn off you know um and uh it's i don't know for me it's just so much fun and i i like you know, I still prefer it over doing anything else. Yeah. I always say when when we do what we really wanted to do, there is two portraits in that. You know, like the portrait of the person and the, and the portrait of the artist. So you see that two souls yeah. and not just one. Yeah. I mean, it's different in, in in realistic portrait, but not quite. You know, like uh, there is something else. It's more like uh, magical or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think it is because I mean, it's. You know, you know how um, I don't know. I guess I guess the way I look at it, I think I think why caricature, you know, if it's done right. I mean, I know there's it's, it's yeah. subjective, but I think like really good in like well thought out exaggeration and character that really captures somebody. I think really what it is is I think our minds um, unconscious unconsciously already sort of exaggerate. So like. You know, like for example, like if there's a crowd of people coming towards you, and one of the, one person in that crowd happens to be a friend of yours, you can notice it immediately. Um, like you, you're, I think you're just seeing the shapes and the form. Like, oh, that's so and so. And the same way, like um, immediately, like if I tell you Tom Cruise, right away you see an image in your mind, but it's probably exaggerated slightly. And I think what we do is we kind of slightly push things already. I think naturally as humans. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That could just be because I've been doing caricature for so long, but like, I just feel like that's a natural. I have this idea that, for example, when you even, let's say your wife, someone that you see, you know, all day, every day, even when you try to think on her, you don't really see like a, you know, like a, a high quality picture. You see like a, these ethereal yeah. thing. So every, every future that she has or this person has, is what your mind goes to. So what we do is not exaggerating thing, but just mm -hmm. these things and put it up there. Yeah. So that's why I say it's uh, it's like you are drawing or painting from memory, where your perception of this person is. Mm -hmm. So when you try, and, and I know I'm pretty sure you you, you do it. You you can have a picture of the person or the character you want to paint, but you, when you are copying it, it's really hard to do it. And you put it away and try to do it from memory, and then you get it done, you know, like. Oh, right. yeah. 
so I think that have to do with that. And, and, and also, as you said, first, when you made the, the example of a friend, because you know how a friend works, uh, walk, talk, you know, the essence of this person. So that's mm -hmm. why I always say to, to people that, that ask me, not just watch or find a picture, find interview, see how he walks, how he talks. How yeah. He, because all of that thing comes together in, 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 the, in the portrait. Oh, yeah. If yeah, that's, that's that. um, you know, I, I don't know if you do this as well, but like a lot of times when I'm painting someone like Donald Trump or somebody, I'll, I'll li listen to interviews or things while I'm painting because it really does help. Like when you're like you're drawing and you just, you know, like you, you can like hear the sounds or like or, you know, or like, you know, painting a musician, a musician and just listening to their music. There's something about it that just kind of helps make pull, it. Yeah, it pulls it in there. Get together and like, like this mix, this uh, yeah. and the thing you're doing. I think that's how you you can see caricatures or portrays uh, that, that are different because they have something else. It's not just trying to copy or try to pull 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 things out. And yeah. I think that's kind of the different. Yeah. When um, I'm curious uh, about your approach uh, when you're doing caricature. Um, I've, I've watched you do, your, you know, some of your little paintings where you don't, you're, you're not even sketching. You're just going in with paint and just you start just kind of blocking in a, a shape, um, which is pretty cool because you're kind of already seeing like some sort of shape. Yeah. Um, is that is that sort of how you usually start? Is you kind of just look at someone and you feel a shape and you just start going yeah. from the outside in? Or yeah. I ha I I have this uh, advice from from a colleague. Just, he said, uh, try to go straight to the canvas because when you do the sketching, you know, the prime, uh, uh, you know, best idea I get in the, in, the, in, the, in the schedule. And then you have to copy it on the, on the, mm. on the canvas. And also when you have the canvas, you have, you have to work with this and do the composition there. So I always, you know, work with the, everything. Okay, I will make the fix there. So... Of course, there are characters that are harder than other ones. Sometimes you just see it right away. You see the, yeah. camp, the, 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 the blank canvas. Okay, I see where this person will go. And when you're doing mm. also a stray with the, with the acrylic, where you say block, it's, it's almost like you're sculpting and you're pushing and you see some shade. Maybe you have to push a little bit farther here. And so you're still trying to create or sketching with the, with the acrylics. Yeah. What I, I, I try to do. do to do that, of course, again, sometimes you find it right away. Sometimes you you you're looking at it and say, okay, I should you know maybe go further here and there. But yeah, I try to do it that way. Have this primal you know uh, intention or, or idea and put it out there. But you have to be in the moment. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just post the, the ones that goes well. <laughs> not every not everyone. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's really cool, though. I mean, it's it's fun. Um, I've done that that sort of a thing as well, so I know what you mean. Um, it is kind of a freeing feeling. You're just kind of just feeling it, and and then sometimes like cool things happen that you never could have planned. You're like, oh, that's cool. I'm gonna leave that. You know, yeah, exactly. that's that's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Um, and it is this time that that uh, doesn't happen, but uh, you kind of feel it, and 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 you just keep pushing, and and then then you got it. And, and I don't know, every time that happens, and sometimes, and I don't want to sound like a cock or anything, sometimes when I see the videos, I don't I don't even recognize me there, you know? Like, uh, yeah. it's yeah. just being taken and things are happening, and then you get it done, and okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, no, it's, 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 but I think that's what's exciting about the art form itself, is just that, um, I mean, I've been doing it for, like, at least 30 something years now and I still am excited to do it and it's still it's always a challenge not in a way where oh I wonder if I can no it's not like a challenging like oh I, I don't know if I can draw this person it's a challenge in how can I do something you know a little bit more unique or push myself um what can I do to take this to a different place you know something that's not as you know is obvious or something um but that's what's so much fun about it is I think the expo exploration of it, you know. And that's what I love about your about your exaggeration is there's there's a lot of pieces of yours where I'm like, oh, that's okay. I that's a, that's an interesting way to look at that person, because you know not everyone is gonna see that the same way. And that's what's cool about caricatures. There's so many different artists out there that do it really well, and 
their approach, like even just the caricatures that fans did of you for this um, this podcast. Yeah. Um, a lot of people chose like the very similar same photo reference, but then took did completely different things. You'll see later, but. Um, it's interesting um, because, like, when I looked at it, I saw a specific thing in my mind, um, and then I look at other people's, and you're just like, "Oh, okay, that's that's interesting. That's yeah, that's one way to do it, I guess." But um, that's what I enjoy about looking at your stuff is, um, is uh, you, it's like you're you're doing like even in like let, let, let's see here, um, there's a there's a piece I'm thinking of right now. Let's see if I can find it. Um, Actually, this is a good one too. Uh, this one of uh, John Malkovich, okay. which I'll try to show it up here. People can see it. Um, but that one right there, like, it's so funny to me, and I love it because it's not the obvious choices in shapes for him. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I would have maybe gone a completely different yeah. way. Um, whereas you, you did almost like it's almost like a triangle head. But it works, and it's just awesome. It's like, oh wow, that's cool. And that's what I really like is that you're pushing um you know i guess the idea of it's it's almost like mix mixing um distortion with exaggeration yeah. um and uh which is an interesting way to do it because that can be really tricky because you can totally miss it completely you know especially in, in, in your case in mind that we go further with the details and when yeah. you are pushing something so much and you can see the lightning the textures you know, when this is not made wrong or with a balance, it gets, it gets kind of grotesque. Yeah. So that's why sometimes, and I know, I'm pretty sure it happens to you, you cannot go, you know, all the way you want to go because you want to do, you know, details and stuff. And then it looks like, you know, like abomination <laughs> or something like that. So you have to do, you have to do it with some balance. That's why also I enjoy drawing a lot. Because, you know, when you're drawing, you don't have to worry about all, you know, the details and the colors mm. and stuff. And you are yeah. more 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 free to do it. Oh yeah, it becomes uh, a job <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you get into the details. Sometimes, um, yeah. I, I yes. still enjoy it. I still enjoy it. Oh yeah. Well, speaking of that, um, when you do your like, for example, the cover of the book is uh, Dolly. Yeah. And uh, how how large is that painting? Uh, that's uh, like seven feet by. I'm not good with the. Actually, have the the thing. There. Seven feet, you said. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. Right. So that that's that's so. That's, that's pretty much like a like a wall for me, like a graffiti. <laughs> yeah. So I have a couple questions then about that. So that particular painting, um, is it? So, it it's it's very 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 realistic. Very the the skin looks like super real, um, and you're doing it with acrylics, which is amazing just there because acrylics are, are really uh uh can be a frustrating medium sometimes oh <laughs> yeah every time i'm doing something with acrylic i always think take yeah. them, when i'm doing this with acrylic why why yeah. <laughs> that's what i do <laughs> um so my question about that is like i mean it's obviously it's huge that's a big painting so you're able to get you really get in there with the detail but um when you're working with acrylic um are you like are you uh, work using like, a, like really thin layers and building building, or do you get pretty opaque? I'm just wondering what how what, how your approach is. I, I, um, you know, with acrylics, uh, especially because of the white, the white ever uh, you know disappears, and all the thin that you have done the next day is gone. Yeah, that's so frustrating. You go thick with it, so <laughs> layer and layer and layer until like you get the the tone basically. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a lot of patience, man. A lot of patience. Yeah. In, in that particular painting, because it was the first one I did that size, I was doing the the the, the texture, and I kind of you know tried to copy all the texture from say for, for the mouth, or, and I was just half the way, and I have all done in just one part, and it's okay. I, I have to sc sc scale this because I already out of texture, and that's how you know have way to go. So. I have to learn how to do it in that size because I didn't have a clue. And yeah. I have to redo things and try to understand things and go again. And, you know, it's not like you're using a bigger brush. It's just yeah. trying to, you know, try to make <laughs> it go in a bigger space. But it's, as you say, it's just going layer and layer and layer and layer until you get it right. Yeah. 
and it's, it's a pain in the ass. It, it is. I mean, it must. I haven't done. Um, that's that's one thing that I'm I'm trying to do. Uh, that my goal co- coming up soon is I'm wanting to do a lot more larger paintings, um, just for myself. You know, um, like this one back here is. Uh, I I I started it like a couple years ago, and I just haven't gotten back to it because I just keep getting. You know, I'll, I'll keep just getting jobs, which is good. Which is good. <laughs> but at the same time, I see it. And I'm like, oh, I want to paint you. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to to work out some time actually, so I can start working on it within this next week. But, but um, when you're working that large, like you know, seven feet, um, it's got to be interesting, you know, for the details though, because you you might you can like probably easily just get lost in there because it's so. And are you and you now? Here's the thing too is, um. I think I've done a caricature based off this reference of, of Dali, but I don't recall there being, um, you know, in the the reference, you know, I don't recall the reference um, having as much detail with the, the pores and all that stuff. So is it a lot of it you're just kind of making up uh, when you're getting into that kind of detail? Of that. I, I tried to, to, to get, in, in that case, when I want to work with detail, get a really detailed picture. Uh, but I think that was uh, it had a really good uh, high quality that one. Of course, when you are pushing things, you're always making up things too. Yeah. So try to be especially with the nose. Try to get it right, and, and, and the mouth. Try to get it right. But the picture was a good one. And I flipped yeah. because okay. see the it, it, that was for uh, an expo in Vegas, and the person said, okay, we don't want to be you know sue or anything, so I just do change it a little bit more. So I flip it. That's why. That's the oh. wrong. Way. That you see that picture is just. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I did. I did a. Um, uh, I was in uh, Spain. Um, I think it's called Gallery Roja or whatever. Uh, the Red Gallery. It's in um, Seville. Okay. And uh, I did a demo. I did basically off the same reference. Um, it's such an awesome picture, but like. I remember um, later when I saw, I was like, oh, yeah, I saw your piece. And I, because mine, I just did like a real loose, like yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't very detailed. Um, but like, yeah, I remember thinking like, I don't remember seeing all the, those pores in that photograph. <laughs> I must have been using a, a way uh, worse yeah. reference. But, um, but still, what's amazing about it too, though, is what I like about your technique is, you know, there's a lot of artists out there that are trying, you know, trying really hard to like, you know they're they're like obsessed with the detail like and um they're not quite they're kind of just you know they just want to put pores on, on the face yeah. all over the place and you're like whoa dude like you got to look at what it really looks like and study yeah. it um and it's just it's just interesting because uh like what you do that i really like is that you've got all the aspects down you know because um there's there's people out there that are so excited about you know, yeah. they want, they like, like, for example, there's probably tons of artists out there who are big fans of your work and they're like, oh, I want to do what he's doing just like that. But they haven't taught themselves about, you know, drawing structure or values, which yeah. are super important. And they want to just jump into the color and the details. You and right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to get the person right before going to the, to yeah. the actual painting and don't go for example go online and find okay i got the the, the the high the best high quality picture that i can see all the pores and all the texture no that's not the way you have to go you yeah. just the, the picture that represent more this character this person if this big, big picture is high quality good but it's not don't just find you know because i want to do these little things and yeah you know, that's yeah. just work that way yeah yeah, it's it's um it's funny to me. I've been teaching for well since I think 2006, and I'm I mean I've done so many critiques. It's ridiculous now thinking about it. But I find myself a lot of the time like you know having to be like, hey, detail is cool and it's fun and everything, but let's focus on and like or they want to jump into color and it's like you you know what like I end up basically saying stuff like, listen, you you don't have the right to go into color yet. Because you haven't, you uh-huh. haven't, you don't understand values yet, and like, but uh, I think it's such an important thing because, you know, uh, people get super excited, you know, and they they just want to do what, you know, their favorite artist is doing, and, yeah. um, but that's what I love. That's what I love about your about your work is you've got you've got like the whole package going, yeah. um, 
But other than even like this, you know, you've, you've got like one of um, Ollie that's like super, super realistic. That's a huge one too, right? That, that was the first big one I did, you know, me working in because I used to work for, for magazines and stuff. I used to work in A4 and whatever. So that yeah. was you know, the big one I did. And, uh, and then again, that was another piece that I have to learn how to paint it. I remember starting that one with the cheeks and the bone cheeks and I couldn't, I didn't know how to do it. So, okay, mm. I, move, I move, okay, let's start with the nose, which is, you know, have more volume and stuff. Okay, I can work with that. So I was learning while I was painting. Mm -hmm. And now I can yeah. to go to this place. And kind of the same thing happened with the Dali because you're not used to it. Your brain is not used to either. For example, <laughs> I, 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 when I get the, the sketch done in, in the canvas, for me, it was so huge that I, I, I couldn't uh, see it. Like, uh, no, this is wrong, but it's, you know, your brain doesn't uh, process it the, the, the way yeah. you are used to, you know, smaller pieces. So then you are getting step back. Yeah. You got to step back quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. cool. <laughs> actually, I did the the, the 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 Ali that one. I did I did it in, back in my country in Venezuela. In my my room there was really small, so I was you know copying copying this texture, but I didn't have enough room enough room to go back and see it was working. So what I did yeah. in those days, you didn't have this smartphone, so I I got my camera, so I take a picture and in display of the camera, I can see a smaller picture. Oh yeah, yeah. And, Okay, it's working. It looks like a texture. So yeah, that's yeah. the way I was uh, realized. Okay, this is working. It was a, <laughs> but you know, it was a learning piece too. Like uh, yeah. So you always have to, you know, and push yourself. And when you're in a discomfort zone and you're repeating yourself, you're not growing. So I, when every time I'm just, you know, having a hard time doing a painting, I know I'm doing something good because it's, you know, is is making me sweat. Yeah, <laughs> and and and, 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 I, I, and I feel bad. Like, oh my god, I did, I, I cannot get this done. And then <laughs> I, see, I see my book. Okay, I think you can make it work. So okay, yeah. So let's <laughs> push it, something like that. But it's really, it's really, you have to be patient. I remember, yeah. I remember a, a, a colleague that he asked me. I, I, he he knew my work. I knew I, I knew his, and he he asked me, hey, did you paint with oil or with acrylic? And I say, no, man, I don't have patience. That's why I paint with acrylic. I don't have patience for the oil to, 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 to dry. He said, no, you have to be really patient to work with acrylic. And that, that <laughs> in my mind until day, like, yeah, it's true. Like, uh, you have to be really, really, really patient to paint with acrylic. Have you tried uh, working with oils doing this kind of stuff? I did it uh, a long, long, long time ago when I was not even thinking on doing paintings. And mm. I really enjoy it, but... Uh, I don't know. I, 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 every year, I say this year I will take a, a oil, but you know, acrylic has been so nice to me. Yeah. I always feel like a, no, you don't want to, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it. There's, it's. I don't know. There's things you can do with acrylic, um, like certain effects maybe that. Yeah. yeah I don't I, know. But I mean, you can you can basically do the same thing with oils. I mean, the you, oils is definitely. Um, the, the way I looked at it when I was first, because I used to only work in acrylics for years, yeah, and then um, I, I like basically when I switched to doing oils, I was like, oh, okay, I've been playing checkers this whole time, and now I'm playing chess. Yeah. Like that's like because with oil painting, it seems like you have to kind of think a few steps ahead all the time. Um, or, I mean, at first you do. Like once once you start painting with any medium, you start to yeah, get right. it and feel it. But I remember um, oil just seemed so much like okay. For me, I just felt like okay, I'm doing something completely different now. It's a little scary, but uh, but yeah. I mean, I, I the funny thing about the two mediums is I'll work on an oil painting and I'm just having a good time. But then I'm like, you know, I think the next time I'll do an acrylic. Yeah, yeah. And then and then I'll do an acrylic. And I'm like, ah, definitely do an oil the next time. <laughs> Uh, it's like one of those things. I can feel that. For example, when I do it, I I, I, done, I have done a, a detailed painting. I said, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I will do just more rough or you know more uh, uh, spontaneous one, more you know expression one. And if you know, I, I wanted to do another because th those hours of being there, I really enjoy. And then mm -hmm. I want these, you know, I want rock and roll. I want this thing done. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so 
and all all, all that it's uh, is part of how you feel in and yeah and, and also have to do with the character you're doing like uh, okay yeah. I see this person in this way I see this person in that way so mm-hmm. everything uh, goes to it and you um the other thing I like about your stuff too is you because you, yeah on one hand you do really super realistic type rendering but then almost what I enjoy even more is the stuff that's a little bit more loose where yeah. you're just kind of just being free and just like letting drips happen and um, more painterly. Um, when you're doing that, is that more just um, like you, do you have a different approach? Like when, when you're doing that, are you deciding like, hey, this one's going to be this way or is it kind of just like let it go? And <laughs> Yeah, not the scariest one, you know, like uh, I like always think um, – for example, when it when it's done and it's there's moisture for it, it's good or I'm I'm fine with that at least for a week. Yeah. I say what what would happen if I started that painting, you know, five minutes earlier or five minutes later? Like uh, like I started that right that moment and if I would started a little bit later, it would be have done would be a, a different painting. Mm. So when I'm doing that, I try to be really in the in, in the song. Like uh, you know, when you are this you were no, you're not with you. Like uh, you are in another place. Yeah. Say earlier, like uh, the thing is done and you didn't know that what happened or anything. So those are more scary because you have to be there because with the detail ones, you just have to, you know, spend time with them and make them work. With this one, especially you want to, to the, the canvas to breathe, you there's no uh, space for, you know, trail. Like uh, you cannot go over. So yeah. And I enjoy that because, as I said, those are more rock and roll. And I mm-hmm. wish to have uh, more of that, there, you know, like every day. But yeah. it's, it's time to time that they come and I'm enjoying when that they happen. Because you, you seem to be pretty fast as well. I mean, how long, how much time do you usually spend on, um, like, I mean, for example, the Dolly one seems like it's it was a long time for no, something that like that. No, a long time and, and also because... I wasn't feeling it. I got this this kind of commission from these art expo, and they 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 said, "Can you do a dolly?" Okay, I will do a dolly. But I was thinking of dolly, and you know the universe of dolly, all the things that he have done. So I want to incorporate things in the painting, things flying, whatever. So I, I overthought it so much that I didn't start anything. I said, I said to myself, "Okay, I will start just doing the face, and I will do things around." Later on, so I'll just start something. So I started painting. I was having problem getting the, the the things done because I wasn't used to it, and I put it aside. Like, uh, and I mm. didn't work for that for months. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't have the idea of the other things that I want to incorporate with in, in, in the portrait. And then I got this call again from the from the art expo. Hey, are you finishing the the dolly? Are you are, are we continuing with that? And so yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Of course, I have to get back. So I, I keep working in the in the phase, mm-hmm. just thinking and doing more stuff, until I saw it and I said, okay, I think this portrait is so powerful that you don't need to add anything else. So I yeah. just pushing it, pushing it. But that one took pretty much I don't know, like nine, ten months. But because also I did a break. But sometimes you need a break, especially for those ones. Yeah. Get it on right. But yeah, it depends. It depends. Sometimes I work two two hours a day. Sometimes I work 10, 12 hours a day. So yeah, it depends. Uh, but yeah, I I don't I won't say if I'm pretty fast because especially those big ones you need to. And you know when you're blending acrylics in big spaces especially if you are doing soft faces. For example, I, I started a, a Mark Monroe and I having so much hard time because, you know, there is no wrinkle, there is nothing, just you have this balloon of uh, <laughs> that you have to blend. And I said, okay, I will let it rest and I will take it later. But uh, yeah, and with acrylic, you have this opportunity to, I mean, you're doing layers and layers and layers, but you get it dry and you can keep going in other places. And yeah. Especially if you are feeling it, you know. What what started for me is a star, and I know pretty sure that happens to you because you want to do the right one, and that's the hardest part for me. Start a painting. When mm-hmm. I start, I can just go. I, if I don't want to sleep, I don't sleep. But just starting the painting is the what takes the longest, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The beginning is always 
like when when you first start and there's that just that empty canvas, it's it's kind of intimidating. No, yeah, yeah every time. It's like, is. yeah, it's like I, I say it's like uh, you know, like you're going on stage, and you're a rock star, like uh, you you know what you're doing, you know you can do it, but if you have these, uh, I don't know, anxious, and you, mm -hmm. it's not like you're afraid, but it's just like uh, you know, like. Right? You know, yeah. you're, not sure. you're not sure that what is going to happen. Yeah. You want to run it right. I always like, you know, I always have this happen to me pretty much almost every, not, not every painting, but most, most times I, I get to a point where I'm like, oh, this sucks. Like, what am I doing? And then like, and you know, you just, it's this terrible. Like sometimes you, you walk away and then you come back later. Like, Oh, that's, that's not so bad. Like, what was I thinking? You know, but then there's other times where you're just like, you're just painting it. And you're like, Oh, this is not working. It's not working. And I just find myself just pushing through. And then all of a sudden it'll just be a couple different brush strokes or something will happen. I'm like, boom, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm back in the game. Now it's working. Um, but I think that's what, you know, there's a lot of artists out there that, that, you know, give up. Yeah. And you gotta. That's the one thing that I learned from my dad is he 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 told me about that too. Just like um, that. There's that. It's basically like the left sided brain, the right side of the brain. You got the creative side, um, that you know that's just like the driving force, and then you got the side that's like very um, analytical, yeah. and it's very like okay, um, that's not looking right. That's not what people look like. That's you're terrible. Yeah. You know you should give up. You should start over. And you know, it's like you have to like constantly like fight that the yeah. other half of the brain. Like, no, come on, man, let me be an artist, let me be free. And I find myself doing that a lot when I'm working on stuff, where I have to just ignore those other th thoughts in my mind and just push through it in order for it to come, you know, come I think to life. The analytic part is the strongest one because wow, that never shut up. Like uh, <laughs> every time it's just Byron, but by let me be. Like, I'm the kind of person like if I'm doing these splashy things. I'm doing splashy thing and I'm cleaning the splashy things I'm doing the floor. Like right away, I cannot just be free. Let's let me be free, man. Yeah. And, and I have the, <laughs> that that too. Like I, and, and it, you have to let the, the the painting breathe. You know, like sometimes yeah. you see it, you will see it the next day, maybe the next week. But in especially with me, those that are, are not working, when I take them later, let's say a week or even month. Then they're the strongest piece that I have, actually. Yeah, so. yeah. That's again, you never know. You gotta gotta just push through it. Um, but yeah, that's that's something that still happens to me on a regular basis. You know, like it's just like even even like um, like right now I'm working on sketches for this mad stuff, and um, I'm finding it really challenging because now I know that they don't want me to exaggerate very much. So now I feel like I I'm not really drawing naturally. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm like second guessing almost everything I'm doing now. Like, should I, is the nose too big? Is it, you know, and, and so I'm finding myself like almost imprisoned where every mark I make, I'm like, oh, was that a good one? Like, yeah. uh, I hate when that happens, but no, it, it happens. It I, I work for magazines too. And man, that was just pain in the ass, like every time. And, and I send it and I send it. And I remember once they, they, they push it for, a, I was doing this, this, uh, teen of baseball, this baseball team. And one of the characters, the, the person said, no, it doesn't look like the person. It doesn't look like the person. You can tell what's the person. At some point I pretty much did a, a, a realistic portrait. You can put in Photoshop the, the, the picture of the person, you know, over the, 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 the yeah. thing that I did. No, it doesn't look like the person. It's like, what? What do what, what yeah. you want? <laughs> oh no man i've done i've had oh, man i can't even think of the name of the client right now but um uh anyway there was there was one client where i was doing this realistic portrait and they were they wrote they were like uh it's the likeness isn't quite right there's something wrong with the nose or something like that and i'm like uh i don't understand and i would and then i would look and i would compare the reference to the thing and i'm like it's exactly the same. And so what I ended up doing was saying, okay, I'm going to, I'll, I'll take a look at it and, um, I'll work on it a little bit. I didn't do anything to it. So like an hour later, I sent it back the same exact file. They're like, okay, thank you so much. It looks great. And I didn't do anything. I just, oh, it's like, they just think that I did something to it. It's like, they want to say something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but I hate when that happens though. Cause there's, there are times where it's like, oh, 
you know, the likeness isn't quite right. Um, uh, what, you know, could you, could you fix it? And it's like, well, to me, it looks great. I don't know. Like, how can you give me some specifics, please? You know, that, that's, that's the worst. Yeah. I mean, when they, as they were working with clients, I mean, when they're like that. Yeah. I mean, the, the weirdest thing is when you do caricature type illustration work, it's, it's a lot different than doing like portrait illustration stuff, because basically when you're doing portrait illustration, you're pretty much just drawing how the person looks exactly with caricature it's like you specifically hired me because you like my work and now you're trying to tell me how to do to do it it's like that doesn't make any sense can you caricature no then shut the fuck up <laughs> that's what you wish you could say <laughs> yeah, I have clients that uh, when they they hire me to do something and, and i say oh, do you want me to you know do some uh, sketch approval approval stuff and no, no, we believe in what you do, just do what you do. And, and they even, I just think, I like to, you know, send the, the, the portray as a surprise, like uh, you unveiling in your your house, whatever you want me to to send you a picture if you want. That. No, no, yeah. then we want to open it. That Those are the, the best ones. Like, uh, they don't <laughs> tell you what to do. They don't even tell you which images to pick up. You just do what you, I just said, just do you yeah. and, and, and that's it. But yeah. that doesn't happen that often. <laughs> Yeah, it's I don't know, man. Have you ever heard? Um, I can't remember w the exact quote, but um, John Singer Sargent he, he had like some famous quote where he said like doing like basically he was saying this doing uh, portrait commissions for people, and he said it's basically there's something always wrong with the mouth, like that's that even with Sargent that was how he looked at. He, he rather would just do his own paintings for himself. He did so many commissions that his whole – whenever he thought of it, all he could think of, there's always something wrong with the mouth all – every time. So I just, I just love thinking about this amazing master yeah. who's, who has this, those kind of problems, you know? Okay. It's like you're going to tell Sargent that there's something wrong with the mouth? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, so um, I got a couple questions from fans I wanted to ask you. Um, there's there's um one that's a recording, so we'll do that um I think when we show the artwork so you can see that person's artwork. Um so this first one is by Costas and um he says um he'd like to ask you about your drawing process, what you're trying to avoid when you're drawing, and what were the mistakes that you used to do? If you have any tips about that. Okay, when I'm drawing I try to avoid people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad uh, working with uh, with people around. Yeah, I'm like this uh, this character. On, I think it was uh, uh, Mr. 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 Man or something. That the, the guy who gets uh, made his say invisible, but when no one was watching. Like my superpower, I can't do it when no one is watching. So <laughs> <laughs> that that my thing. Um, I don't know. I try to avoid um, get too into the the reference. You just try to think of uh, the character and now look, uh, you know, directly to the reference I'm doing. Mm. Because that's that's one of the, when you're trying to you know copy the eye, copy the nose. No, just do the shape, do the things that you uh, uh, think of, it and then go with the yeah the, the features. Yeah. So you 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 basically you what you're saying is you try to you're trying to put down your impression, yeah. trying to not stick so closely, you know use it use a reference as like um you know like a foundation. Yeah. But you're not trying to just like draw exa like you know yeah it makes sense. I just um, said you, I just said uh, try to 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 see the shape. It's like you're in this uh, contest. Okay, you will see the picture uh, five seconds. We will take it out, and now you do it. Something like that. See okay. that? Yeah, yeah. Try to do it from from memory. I think that's, that's what I. Do. Yeah, I think that's really good too. Um, that's also like one thing I've done that before too, where you, you know you're trying to you, the drawing just feels stiff, you know. So then I try to you know just try to draw from my mind. Uh, but another, another thing that kind of helps is doing a caricature of your caricature, oh, like yeah. like kind of like just put the reference away, but just look at your, your first sketch and then try to just exaggerate that more. You know, there's all kinds of fun little all, things. All, all, all the advice I have is uh, sometimes, and I know that happens to you too, 
sometimes you don't not you're not feeling it you know and you can be sit down there for hours and yeah. hours but yeah, every time i sit down and try to do something and i don't get it done in five or ten minutes that i'm i'm struggling i just okay forget about it i will come later on today or tomorrow but today is not happening yeah because so, <laughs> ain't gonna happen ain't gonna yeah happen. no no totally um all right so um we are at the point where I think I'm going to show you some fan art, but before we do that, um, there's also some more questions. We'll do those later. But uh, for right now, um, this is a very important, very important part of my podcast called Serious Questions with Jason Seiler. Now, my question for you is, I know that I've, I've seen you dance quite a bit. You've got quite, quite the moves. Um, uh, some say sexy moves and years ago i was in a band and i was caught off guard um we were recording in a studio and i was goofing around on an acoustic acoustic guitar and i was trying to i was just being silly and doing some like latin sounding music um and i didn't know that they were recording me okay. and then the album came out and then what they did was they took that little bit and they put it as a hidden track at the end of the album. Okay. Um, and uh, so I'm going to play that for you. Oh, God. It's uh, my – and this was like 15 to 18 years ago, uh, something like that. And um, it's me, my attempt at playing Latin music. And I was doing it, like I said, without them knowing I was, I was being recorded. I was just being silly and, and I was like saying stuff like, yo, get old Taco Bell and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and I had no idea they were recording me. So my question for you is this. Um, do you like my Latin music and will you dance to it uh, for everybody? So um, I'm going to try to play it, see if it works. Hopefully this works because um, I'm not sure if, it's, if you're going to be able to hear this. But I'm going to try it. So tell me if you can uh, hear this and, uh, and let's see if you can dance to it. If it worked or not, hold on a second. If that didn't work, whatever. That's lame. Oh, um, and now I'm curious. Not because I want to do the dance, no, but because I want to see your <laughs> Latin. Um, well, it it was basically dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dun 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 dun dun and I said something like Yo quiero mos invitamos allá en la plaza por unen a siete de la noche. It's muy importante bien porque tenemos la palabra de Dios. Yo yo taco man. That's probably even better than what. Send send me the send me the the thing and I will I will I will make a choreography for that. Okay. Well, anyways. There was no dancing, but that was still fun, and that was Serious Questions with Jason Seiler. <laughs> All right, so um, as you know, there's a lot of fan art, and um, I'm going to try to uh, – we'll try to go through it. There's, I think, at least 45 or 46 uh, different drawings and paintings that people did of you, and, uh, and uh, let's take a look at those. Do you, do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Okay, cool. So this, this first one is done by um, uh, Geraldo uh, Perez. Nice. It's very cool. Very cool style. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I've seen something like that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and this one is by Jair uh, Rovero. And actually, he's got a question. Oh. Um, 
Do you know? Do you know who this is? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think uh, he's following me on Instagram. I think. Um, he sent an audio question, but for some reason it's not playing. So um, uh, I'll just read what he wrote. Uh, the audio says, "Greetings, Siler. Nice to say hello and greetings to Hota from the city of Marase, uh, Venezuela. I don't know if I said that right. Marase, yes, it should be Maracay, maybe." Barakai. Okay, that's probably right. Uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, anyways, uh, right. I follow Hota's work for years, and it's great. I always tell him about Instagram. My question is this. Since when do you not eat an arepa of meat with yellow cheese? Uh, since the arepa is as vital to a Venezuelan as is the water to live. And then he invites me to uh, try our Venezuelan arepas. Uh, I don't, am I saying that wrong? Is it arepa? Yeah. It's a arepa with a, like. A... He sent this picture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice one, yeah. So, anyways, uh, so that's. Well, I, I haven't got an arepa since I don't know the weekend. We got uh, here in Texas. You can find the the dough to make the arepas. Uh, everywhere. So, I pretty much have <laughs> arepa every other day. <laughs> <laughs> so you you do eat them every other day. Yeah. 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 That's kind of our burger, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I th so he's for some reason he thinks that you don't eat them or you don't eat enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, because uh, uh, <laughs> now that we're all over the, the world because of the situation there, but here in Texas, there's a lot of Venezuelans, so we can find our product uh, easily. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, uh, this one is by you know this guy Tom Fluharty. I this one. I know that guy. I think I know hey. that guy. That guy, he's obsessed with with blue. With, I don't know what his what his in, deal is. In the blue, yeah, I don't know. I wish, yeah. I wish Archie was tough. I think he's good. Yeah, he's awesome, man. <laughs> no, I love the guy. I love the guy. Maybe you should try a different color, though. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk to him and make him change his mind. Yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> I think I think pink should be the next color. Um, <laughs> Pink series. No, but his work is awesome, man. He's he's I, I, he's I, so cool. I remember, I remember when I was uh, uh, starting in this, uh, when I, I wanted to make it in, you know, publishing a magazine. It was uh, Thomas. It was Roberto Prada. It was. Uh, oh you yeah. Know, and even you, man, you were kind of the the, the son of Tom Fluharty. I, I I saw your work, <laughs> your critics those those years, and I remember trying to make it there. I got actually with. Uh, uh, as a uh, agency or representative, and they were uh, pretty much asking me to do what you do or what you did. Well, we still do, and it's not, I cannot do that. But you were always there, you know, and I always respect <laughs> and, and, and see you like, oh my God, I want to be there once. So, <laughs> well, thanks, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but I love the guy. Oh, man. Yeah, that's awesome. um, this one is by Costas, um, Papa Theodoro. I okay. hope I said that right. Um, he's the one that asked the, the earlier question. Okay. Very right. cool. And uh, this one is – and by the way, just everyone know, we're going to go through these kind of quick just because there's so many. Um, uh, but that doesn't mean that we're not, like, wow. enjoying your work. <laughs> uh, this one is by Valentin um, Shibrit. Yeah. Shibrit. I don't know if I said that right, but he's know. he's awesome, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is cool. I think he's really cool. Um, this is by Gareth Roberts. It's nice. Uh, Myself so many times, man. <laughs> yeah, people have. I think I've been posting these everywhere. Uh, I've seen because I know you. You tell them don't don't post them out there. I've seen, yeah. but I've seen like a like a three or four, no more than that. So yeah. they they pay attention to you. <laughs> Good. Um, this is by Julio um, Car Car Carvalho. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Julio. I think I said that wrong. Look like a like a sculpture here. Yeah, like a sculpture. Strong. Um, this one is by Jonathan Groot. And I think this is like a gouache. Yeah, it should be a gouache. It's cool. Gouache. Gouache. When you used, I used to have the long hair. <clears throat> it looks like uh, you know how everyone's posting that old app. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Got like the the really gray beard there. Yeah. Um, I don't know why this one looks so small, but this one's by Matthew Masterson. Okay. Um, let me see if I can zoom it in a little bit. 
can see a little bit better. But yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, they all good, man, and I'm in it. So yeah, this is a, be a, a really tough one. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Um, yep. So this one is by Tassir, uh France. Yeah, the great Tassir. Yeah, he did this, of course, with acrylic. Yeah. Um, he did this pretty fast too, because he was like, "Hey, do I have time to do one?" I was like, yeah, and then he like sent it to me the next day. I was like, oh, awesome! <laughs> wow, that's that's really good. Yeah, he's yeah, been uh, he's on a uh, painting kick, man, just pumping them out. Yeah, man, he's uh, he's been growing and growing and growing. He's on a uh, never stop machine, and, and I uh, that's something, you know, like uh, he never yeah. stops. He really he really works and stuff, and you can tell, you can tell. Oh yeah, no, he's he's killing it. Yeah. Uh, this one is by Dominic Zowlinger. Nice. Pretty cool. Really, really cool. Oh, I just realized that it says Face the Truth yeah. uh, podcast and then caricature over and over again. <laughs> that's <laughs> Which, that's appropriate for this episode, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Cool, yeah. Uh, this is by Salah Kadari. And um, I think he sent me a color version too. So, I th Yeah, there's two versions, so... Um, I I like this guy's work. Oh, there you are dancing too. I didn't realize that till now. Got everything there. Wow. Yeah. Brum, 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 brum. <laughs> cha 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 cha. <laughs> That's awesome. So here's the the color version of that. Wow. Salah. Very cool. I'm so flattered, man. Oh. Um, here's a this one's by uh, Scott Black. Yeah, wow. you look like a, I. So I chose to draw from this one as well, but um, because it just it looks so. Uh, it's just a great reference to draw from, you know. It just feels so sinister. Yeah. You look like a. Don't fuck with me, man. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna. Tell me I'm I'm that person. <laughs> yeah, I love it though. It's so cool. Thank you, man. So here's this is cool, man. Uh, this is by Adita Bahasser, and. Uh, I really like this one. I like how yeah, like, I love the that. shapes yeah. are like real, like suggestive and just kind of really loose with disappearing. The, yeah, it's really cool. The digital thing that's really really cool. Yeah, that's this, yeah, that's a nice one. Uh, this is by Ernest uh, Priego. Yeah, Priego. I know the guy. Wow. <laughs> I know this guy. Yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> and this is tough. You should give me like a week or two weeks to select it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm enjoying this. Wow. Uh, this is by Jason Williams. I'll email all these to you and so you can uh, look them over after. Oh, man. Uh, and this one is by, uh, it just says Mecco. Mecco. Yeah, so I'm not sure what the first name is or whatever. but Maybe it's 19. 19. Yeah. yeah. My parents named me 19. <laughs> um, this is by uh, Juan uh, Suentes. Suentes. I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Juan. Juan. How you spell it? J O A O. I'm just saying. Juan. I don't know. Juan. Or it's like uh, you know uh, Owen Wilson. Uh, he's wow. like. Yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> hey, wow. <laughs> um, this is by Terry Beveridge. That's cool. It's a nice style, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like when people are drawn with pens. It's so so yeah. cool. Um, this is an interesting style, too. This is uh, by David uh, Francesco. Francesco, yeah. <laughs> Looks like a uh, real airbrush. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Kind of looks like a real airbrush. I always this picture of me thinking or thinking that I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is by Ari Jordan. And Ari is one that has an audio question for you. So let me find that, play that for you. Um, so here's his question. Hi, Jota. I'm Ari from Spain. And... 
So I say you're a great artist for me. I'm among a bunch of other artists, a good reference in my life and my artist life. And I would like to ask you for something. Uh, for example, I have noticed that you listen to music when you when you're painting. Uh, do you what do you listen? What type of music do you listen to? Uh, for example, I use music when I have to draw a character. I try to listen to, to the music related to him or her. Uh, do you do you do the same? Just in order to get involved with with your work. Thank you, and keep on drawing or painting. Okay. Did you? Yeah, I got it. I got it. First oh, okay. thing that works and and yeah, I I always do that. If it's a, an artist, if it's a music a musician i always try to use i mean listen to the music at least at the beginning because if it's a detailed painting and i don't really enjoy the music that much when i'm in the detail thing i can yeah i can go with other things but at least at the beginning to get the, the sketch to get everything done mm -hmm. type of the of the of the person of the musician yeah. yeah i did that um i whenever i've done paintings for rolling stone um like the first one I ever did w was Lil Wayne and oh. uh, I never listened to Lil Wayne before. And so I bought one of his records okay. and th so the entire time I'm painting, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> wow, yeah, you know? And so I'm like doing that while I'm painting, like doing a little, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's something like, <laughs> I mean, I can start doing, but then if I'm okay, I, okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this is by Jared Hobson. He did uh, two of them, so I, I thought, you know, I might as well share them both. They're po both pretty cool, so. Yeah, they are. They're really cool. Yeah. You, uh, it's funny, the the one on the right, oh, the the one with uh, the, the side profile. Okay. Um, there's something that just reminded me of, and I, I don't know, there's something about the shape. It's just really funny, <laughs> like. Um, I really like how he pushed the, the form there. It's cool. It's interesting seeing the two different perspectives. I do. Oh, I know what it reminded me of. Um, and this is so weird and random, but um, it kind of reminds me of how Steve uh, Brodner used yeah. to draw uh, George Bush Ooh. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he would, there's like some similar shapes there. Like it just reminds me of, or like the monkeys from um, Jungle Book. Thank you. you know? for <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. You're right. Yeah. There's something. <laughs> you look like a monkey. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just make all this to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming on my podcast so I could insult you. Um, yeah. All right. Um, oh, this one's great. This is by Kiko Yamada. Oh, the great Kiko. Love oh, her. Yeah. She's great. She said to me, he's uh because he's he's a little man, but he casts a huge shadow. Oh fuck. <laughs> Love you, Kiko. Wow. Love this one too. Yeah, this is great. And with that to say, oh god. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's great. I love every she's sent in a few so far and every time I'm like Oh, this is killing me. I love it. Uh, this one is by Carlos Rubio. He's a, a also Venezuelan. Yeah, I know him. I mean, I know his stuff too. Okay, he's pretty cool. Very nice. Wow, we have a lot of Venezuelan out there. <laughs> and uh, this one, um, actually, this is not the right. Maybe I have two. I think I'm. He. Mm -hmm. He did a couple, and I think I accidentally put both of his on here. So this was an early one he did. Okay. I just realized that I think I did. This is the old one with the app. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I have both of them on here. But, uh, well, he, he gets extra exposure, I guess, uh, because uh, I screwed up. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So this, is, this one is by Hasif Kahan, which is pretty cool. Nice pencil drawing. So everyone was – like digging this reference, which is cool. Uh, this one is by Hasif. Wait a minute. Oh, he did two. That's right. Yeah. So this is uh, the same artist did two uh, separate. This is like a, I think an acrylic. Yeah, I can tell it's acrylic. <laughs> yeah, you're like my 
my love and my hate. Um, this one is by Theo. Um, I'm not going to try to say your last name. Um, <laughs> Tena did this, did it, did this. <laughs> um, very cool style, though. I like this a lot. Yeah, I love it too. I mean, it's uh, you should give away a lot of stuff, like twenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. Um, so honoring flattery, man. Oh man, that's it. Yeah, yeah this one is by Laurent Grissat. Very cool. Very cool. It's almost like uh. It, like, it almost seems like the, some influence from the music, you know? Like you, it looks like you're like that's that. You yeah. have to say that too, you know? yeah. And that's that that shows, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Um, this is a very interesting uh, choice. Yeah. <laughs> of, of exaggeration here, but this is by uh, Chelia Puta. Okay. The black, the black rose, uh, I think something like that. Um, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is a. Uh, this reminds me of like a like a one of those uh, Russian dolls. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, this one is by David uh, Watchtenheim. Yeah. Yeah. Hope everyone's making you so sexy. Yeah, I, I, that's, <laughs> that's what I don't you know let allow myself to show. Just I'm doing this just for you, man. I'm, that's why I just, <laughs> I just that's send, awesome. uh, post uh, sexy pictures. <laughs> that doesn't look like me at all. Uh, this is by um, Fayed Raf- Rafikov. Yes, I, I remember that that image. So this must be when you were working on your Dali. Yeah, and I was letting my <clears throat> grow those those days, those months. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, this one is by Sam King Davis. Pretty interesting style. Really interesting. Hmm. <laughs> And uh, this is by Anthony uh, Joffrey or Joffroy. I don't know if I'm saying your last name, Anthony, but he's pretty awesome, man. He's pretty awesome too. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, yeah, uh, really, really good. Yeah, I love. I like. I really love how he pushed uh, the forehead uh, yeah. into your eye, but also the way his just this overall style of how he drew that mouth is just awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> so cool. I love it. <laughs> the way that hat's just. You know, that's good. I like this one. You push it and you still have, you know, the shapes and. and, and the, oh yeah, now he's I he's one of my favorite. Uh, like I'm not like really into tons of caricature art because, you know, I'm mo- I'm mostly into like, um, you know, fine art. No, like I mean type and, stuff. And that's an advice I I, I, gave, I give to to our peers. You don't go, you know, and see what the other peers are doing. You have yeah. to go and find influence in you know classic and whatever out of what we are doing is that the only way to try to grow and try to do different things. Yeah. But we still keep uh, you know trying to emulate what our peers are doing. We're just doing the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. So I'm with you in that, and and, and not just you know. Classic, even in his culture, even in music, just try to get inspiration and try to incorporate it to your stuff. So I, I do the same. But you know, every time I have comments, I try to to see their works and you know, and try to give them yeah humble opinion. But yeah, I always try to say, hey, just try to get away of the. If you want to grow in what you're doing, just try to find inspiration in other places. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say too. Is just that it, like what I like about his work is because um, there, there's so many different caricature artists out there. But whenever I see his stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I, I you know because there, there's not a lot of caricature art that I see, and I'm like, like, um, I would say inspired or just like, you know, I don't know because I've seen so much, you know, so it's like it's hard. But that's what I like about his style is that he's got a really interesting voice, and I really I really like his his take on things, you know. <laughs> For everyone, you know, half a voice, and when you, yep. uh, and you, and you, and you think you had it, or, or you had it, you don't think you had it. <laughs> you just keep going, and try to find it. So yeah, yeah, sort of curse. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. But but that's the that's the good thing, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one is by Reza Mokhatara Jazani. Okay. 
right? <laughs> oh, I did this last time. It's just it's just Reza Jazani. It must oh. be a middle name they gave me or something. Uh, but Reza, you look. Uh, for some reason, this seems very German to me. Yeah. And uh, and I'm you just had yourself some schnitzel, <laughs> and uh, you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> this 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 schnitzel is good, yeah. I shall stomp around now, <laughs> do a little dance, make yeah. a little love. Yeah, a good Russian man. Get down know. tonight. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. Right, I like it. Um, oh, so this is the other one by Lars. So that he did too. So uh, this is his second one. Okay, got it. <laughs> it's cool, so, man. He did it three times. He drew me painting three times. Yep. <laughs> nice. Got in there three times or yeah. twice. Um, this one is by Leighton Scarborough. It's pretty cool. And I think he told me he did this on an iPad, I think. Wow. So it's cool. Uh, this is by Chris Ross. It's pretty cool. Another acrylic. Yeah, I can tell already. <laughs> My old friend. Uh, this is by Michelle Pendergrass. And let's see. This one is by Marcelo Pepe. Pepe. Wow. <laughs> me playing a mandolin, which I suck. I mean, I could stop playing everything, but mandolin, I think, is that I play the worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've messed with, uh, with it a little bit. It's a little tricky sometimes. Yeah, it is. I just Never buy I just bought it to play uh, "Losing My Religion," and I, I was yes okay. <laughs> have you have you ever played on a, a banjo? Yeah, I, I actually got a banjo, but I don't. I cannot do the ding ding ding. I just yeah. Play the guitar. It's, I, it's hard to play, man. Yeah, it's really tough to play. Yeah, I've messed with it before, and it's like, oh no, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is by Ramon uh, Scandoval. That is too. Wow, there's so many. I just say so many approach that you wouldn't have uh, done but I'm, i don't mean it in a bad way but that's open your your your, your mind to like uh, yeah it's some different ways to because you know you know when someone doesn't know always do the same approach to every character in the, yeah. so, so that's good oh yeah that's what's interesting that's why i like doing a, uh, this for the podcast is because you never, you never know what people are going to do, and there's so many different takes on it, you know? Yeah. Um, this one is by uh, Darius Lipinski. So that's interesting, too. Can't tell who the face is in the background. Kind of yeah. looks like... I'm thinking of that. Maybe it's uh, doing a portrayal of the person <laughs> who painted. It looks like my friend Grigor, kind of. Mm. <laughs> that's another great one, man. That Grigor is... Oh yeah, he's awesome, man. Yeah, he's awesome. Wow. Yeah. He's uh, awesome. Here you go. This is so oh, accurate. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me, man. Yeah. That's me. Watch out, ladies. <laughs> uh, this is by um, Jorge uh, Sal Salcedo. Uh, yeah. Something like something like that. Anyways, that's awesome. Yeah, he should be from Venezuela because of the flag <laughs> and everything. <Yeah. laughs> Wish I was like that. <laughs> yeah. wow. uh, this one is by Christopher uh, Hersman. And let's see. This is by Jason Church. So it's kind of cool. A bunch of different ideas. Yeah. It's cool. I like the one with the long hair. Yeah. I was watching that one. It's cool. I like that, that exaggeration with the arm, too. It's pretty yeah. fun. Yeah. But I'm strong arms, like you saw in the previous picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is by Ryan Biddle. Nice. <clears throat> I know those pictures. Yeah. Pretty badass. You got Siamese twins here. Yeah. And uh, the last one is mine, of course. I, I hate that one. Who did that one? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, it's funny. Um, it's it's really funny because I didn't even think about like someone uh, on Facebook I, when I shared this they're like oh is this like a tribute to um, Sebastian Kruger's uh, James Jean painting and I was like 
no, I don't even remember that painting. And I had to look look uh, it up. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, oh, man, it's like it is very similar. But the funny thing is, um, it's like, no, I just the reason I did that is as I was working on this, um, I, I really wanted to push that giant eye socket, you know, okay. um, and uh, it was like so dark, but there was so much space in there. I wanted to have something in there. Yeah. And so at first I just did like a little white twinkle. Okay. Um, and, and then obviously there's light coming through your ear, you know? So, um, I, what I did was at the end, I was like, you know what, it would be kind of cool to make that white twinkle red because it's going to really pop with that contrast. Right. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, what? I'm going to do that with the ear as well. Um, it was just one of those things where I just kind of uh, on the fly kind of just did, yeah, yeah, I... um, but anyways, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, I love that one too, man. It's fun. Uh, it's a fun reference to uh, to draw from. Yeah, I like that picture because you can see the sculpt. You know, you can see the volumes and the the, the features. Yeah. No, it's it's fun. I I, I had a blast. Um, I'm, I'm flatter and yeah, I have a uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you there was a lot of them. So, like I said, I'll, I'll email those to you, um, and you can look at them, look through, and uh. uh Pick one that you like, and uh, not mine, um, of course. I just did mine for fun. Um, yeah, that means. And uh, one but yeah, um, I'll send you mine though if, if you want a copy of it. I think I'll, I'll send you like I can send you like the high res version or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, it was fun. I was I was actually sketching that on my iPad, just hanging out with my kids, watching the movie, and they're like, "Who is that guy?" I'm like, "Oh, he's an artist. I'm going to talk to." So. Um, yeah, thank you so much for doing this, man. Um, sure. This was a lot of fun. Um, before we go, is there anything uh, that you would want to promote that you're working on or anything coming up that people can check out? Uh, wow. No, I mean, I'm uh, not really <laughs> right now. Uh, I, my plan was working in a, in a new book this year, but I've been in a crazy year. So I will be in the ISCA convention this this year. Um, again, so you can go there. I will do. I will do a. Oh, you're um, going this year. Yeah, I will do a seminar there, a workshop. So oh, cool. I, that's the only thing. When I have a book, I will probably make send a question to you with another uh, another <laughs> guest and say, hey, buy my book or something. Now, I'm right <laughs> now, I just you know working my stuff and try to get things done. But I appreciate the the opportunity, man. I'm honored to be here with you and next to all these amazing artists too man really nice talking to you oh yeah it's the same here man this was really fun we'll have to do it again and by the way so your book though just so people know th is this book still available no, yeah, for people? yeah of course that's the, the book is still available you can find right. it and on my page you can find it in, and everybody should go buy that book it's an awesome book there's so much awesome art in it um i love it um it's uh it's perfect you know if you want to like, if you if you if you're like me and you, you end up taking like really long uh, poops, you know, bring a book, bring a book, an awesome book, and spend some time <laughs> looking at awesome artwork while you're taking a poop. Um, you know, put your, put your phone away. You know, books books are important. Yeah. So, um, anyways, um, that's awesome that you're going to be at ISCA. Um, I'm planning. I'm, I'm hoping to go this year. Um, I'm trying to figure it out. It's it's all about like how things are going with deadlines and yeah, and uh, family and all that kind of stuff. But my wife wants to go and um and uh so I'm hoping I'm hoping to go and do some painting. It'll be fun. So we'll see. Yeah, but uh, see you there, man. Yeah. You can go. If not, I will hate you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All love, man. All love. Yeah, all love, man. Hey, high five. <laughs> <laughs> all right man we'll talk soon thanks so much for doing this and uh we'll definitely have to do this again we will do man we'll do and again thank you very much for this man